Education, Superintendent, Mr. John Detweiler, and all district administrators, we welcome you to the 152nd Annual Commencement Exercises of Fremont Ross High School. This is an exciting time for parents, relatives, friends, faculty members, and especially the class of 2018. At this time, I would like to introduce today's honored guests. Please hold your applause until everyone has been introduced. Fremont City School Board members, President Ms. Chantel Laird, Vice President Mr. Alex Gorbitz, Board member Ms. Violetta Ray, Board member Ms. Maria Garza, Board member Mr. Thomas Price, Superintendent Mr. John Detweiler, Treasurer Amelia Giafrido, Assistant Principal of Vanguard Sentinel Career Tech Center Mr. David Beaning, Fremont Ross Assistant Principals Mr. Robert Chevalier, Mrs. Sarah Lewo, and Mrs. Christine Horowitz. All members of the faculty and staff of Fremont City Schools, would you please rise? Seniors, would you please rise? Turn and face your teachers. Seniors standing before you today are a group of outstanding educators that represent leadership, guidance, and commitment to supporting you through your 13 years of education. These educators have served as your mentors, your counselors, your coaches, your advocates, and most importantly, your cheerleaders. Please take this opportunity to show them your appreciation for never giving up on your achievements and always being there for you. Please give these outstanding educators a round of applause. Seniors, please be seated. The class of 2018 has been known as being close-knit. They have shared in tremendous successes and in the pain of loss. They rallied together to help those in need, both in our city and across the nation. We are proud of your accomplishments as little giants, and as you move forward in the world, continue to set high expectations for yourself. By doing so, you establish your path to success in the future. The class of 2018 has earned over $700,000 in scholarships. Approximately 64% will attend college, 4% have enlisted in the military, and 32% will enter the workforce. This year's class president is known for her leadership ability, her infectious personality, and her little giant pride. Gabriella Zuniga is the daughter of Randy Kidd and Andre Zuniga. Plans to enlist in the Air Force and work toward becoming an optometrist. Her fondest memory of Ross High School is hitting her first ever home run during the first softball game this past season. At this time, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the president of the class of 2018. 
what we should have with us on the first day. We're scared that once lunch rolls around, we won't be able to find a table and we'll be forced to stare at a bathroom stall while eating our PB&J for the next 30 minutes, if the hall monitors would even let that one fly. And we're threatened by all the upperclassmen who are already confronting the high school living. But nine months down the road, we figured things out. We made the most out of being considered the least, and in a blink we're sophomores. So now we're walking the halls with some confidence. We know now that three binders and four notebooks gets the job done, rather than the seven binders and nine notebooks we lugged around the year before. See, freshman year, I easily could have opened my locker up as one of those little school stores. I was fairly overprepared. We're feeling less threatened because those once intimidating upperclassmen are now our buddies and possibly teammates. Things are really looking up from here for us because we've turned around and now we're juniors. We found our friend group, possibly even one or two honeys along the way. Not at the same time, of course. Or thought I think. We're walking into class with our one binder full of loose paper and a pencil, and we've become the upperclassmen that we were at one point so threatened by. Then boom, what feels like the next day comes. to dictate the journey 
that is your life. Only you can take hold of the reins and make yourself who you want to be. But there is no right or wrong path to follow. Don't think of your future as a road on which you may get lost. Think of it as an open field, with great things awaiting you at every turn. Your main concern should be hoping you get to experience as much as possible. Many years from now, high school will just seem like a small blimp on the radar. Some of us may want to shove these memories to the back of our minds and forget about them. Yet, remember what you've gained in these past four years. Your identity, the confidence to express your talents, and, perhaps most importantly, lifelong friends. What you should take away from today is the assurance that you are not alone. Some of us may be best friends, and some of us are strangers, but we're all moving forward together now. And remember, as Victor Kayim said, even if you fall on your face, you're still moving forward. So, here's to growing up together as the graduating class of 2018. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Our next speaker is Savannah Kruger. Savannah is the daughter of Catherine and Robert Kruger. Savannah's fondest memory of high school is participating in the art club. Savannah plans to attend Princeton University, studying public policy. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Savannah Kruger. Thank you. Welcome, students, family, friends, staff, and congratulations to Primo Ross's graduating class of 2018. Each and every one of us has worked hard to get here and has come such a long way. Hopefully my speech is rather short so I can get us out of here as soon as possible. I know we all have a busy day ahead of us, going to grad parties, getting money from our weird uncles, and never picking up a Shakespeare play ever again. I've been thinking a lot these past few weeks about what monumental, life-changing advice I could give you in the next three minutes. And believe it or not, I found it very difficult. I mean, this is totally different than the advice I have been giving for the past four years carrying around a green piece of paper and pretend it's a hall pass, write formulas inside your calculator, and if you didn't read the book, write some proverbial nonsense about life and pray for the best. But now I actually have to talk about, like, real life and stuff. And that's an intimidating topic, because after today, our lives will go in many different directions. So there is no one cookie-cutter guide to success that I can provide for all of you. Yet even though we are all following different paths, with different goals and plans, the most important goal in all our lives is simply to be happy. So no matter where you go and what life throws at you, find what brings you happiness and cherish it. As Marie Kondo once said, disregard anything that doesn't spark joy. Which is why approximately 0.4 seconds after exams, we all threw away every essay, math quiz, and study guide we've ever had. Life can become overwhelming, and it is easy to get caught up in all the change and stress we might face. But I want you all to remember to take time to enjoy the things that make us smile. Because beyond all the cram sessions, PowerPoints, and tests we knew we failed, what really made high school count was all the amazing memories. Laughing hysterically in class, going for late night drives with your friends, dancing at prom, cheering with your classmates as our team won the football game, and this one right here, when all our hard work has finally paid off. It is these moments that we'll remember forever, and it is these moments that truly make life great. So as we move on to the next chapter of our lives, remember to chase your passions, spend time with those you love, and enjoy the little moments, because life is short and we should fill it with as much happiness as we can. Congratulations, class of 2018, and I hope that whatever you do, it sparks joy in your life. Thank you. Thank you, Savannah. Our next speaker is Samuel Long. Samuel is the son of Jonathan and Rebecca Long. His fondest memory at Ross was Senior Awards Night, which reaffirmed all of his hard work through high school. Samuel plans to attend Miami University and major in biochemistry with a pre-med focus. Mr. Samuel Long. Good afternoon, everyone. I'll be your speaker for the next 45 minutes. Just kidding, I'll try to keep this brief. I'd like to start by thanking everyone who helped me get 
get here? My parents, teachers, coaches, and friends. One question I'm sure we're all tired of hearing is what are you doing next year? We all have it figured out, finally, and it was a long process to get here. We've been through a lot in the last four years, making new friendships, finding ourselves, and deciding what we would do next year. Personally, deciding where to go to college was a very difficult decision. My father gave me some great advice that I would like to share with you all now. You will do great no matter where you go, not because of the name on the institution you go to, but because of your name and your hard work. You'll bring that with you wherever you go. There's a great truth in this statement, and it is, and it is that if you work hard and do your best, you will be successful because of what you bring to the table. No school, diploma, or job title will prove your self-worth more than your hard work and dedication to becoming your best self. The last four years have been full of change, and hopefully you've matured a little bit as well. Similarly, the next four years will provide countless opportunities where you will be pushed, tested, and given the opportunity to grow as a person. Wherever you spend the next four years, I hope you take advantage of every opportunity for growth and have as much fun as possible, because life just isn't that long. I hope that wherever you go, you do your best and remember who you are, where you came from, and what makes you unique. You unique. Because at the end of the day, that will be what sets you apart. Class of 2018, we have now completed the foundation of our education. While this is exciting, it is important to note that this is by no means where learning ends, but rather a launch pad into a life full of learning. If you are going to college, you will be academically pushed harder than ever before. After college, when we enter the adult world, there, there are even more opportunities for learning. Wherever you end up, make sure you are, you are always learning. There is such a massive amount of knowledge in this world that it would be impossible to think we are ever done expanding our educations. Try to learn something new every single day because that is how you better yourself. Class of 2018, go out into the world, be your best self, do your best wherever you are, and have fun. Congratulations again to each and every one of you. Thank you for listening. And as the great Michael Scott once said, see you later, Fremont. Catch you on the flippity flip. Thank you, Samuel. Our next speaker is Sarah Schott. Sarah is the daughter of Jim and Kelly Schott. Sarah's fondest memory of high school, a senior homecoming. Sarah plans to attend The Ohio State University and major in natural, natural resource management. Ms. Sarah Schott. So before I start, I want to offer one disclaimer. Um, I've been battling a cold past couple days. I thought those are one thing that you got in the winter, but this is actually the first day of summer for me, and here I am, sicker than a dog. So when I sat down to write this graduation speech, I realized two things. I didn't have the time between scholarships, college, and everything else to write this speech, and who was I to truly give you all advice on the rest of your life? I mean, the only thing I could truly give advice on is four years in high school. And in case you haven't looked around at how ridiculous everyone looks, it's a little late for that now. So I decided that I'd do what any other high school student who has an assignment to do does. I would totally steal someone else's ideas and make them my own. I mean, I had four years to practice the art of plagiarism without getting caught. I'm pretty good at it by now. So what I realized I wanted to say was written for me five years ago by my dad. After a disagreement with my parents, he wrote me a letter on leadership. I kept that letter, and over the past four years, when I needed advice, I pulled it out. My dad is an amazing guy. He's one of my biggest role models and an outstanding leader. The best way I can describe his leadership to you is his response to a question of mine one day. I asked him, Dad, you're like technically the boss of the guys down there at the office, right? And he said, I guess you could call it that. I said, well, why did you get stuck with driving the crappiest work truck? You just got a brand new truck and you're driving the one that's all rusted out. And he looked at me and said, just because I'm the boss doesn't mean I should get the nicest things. Really, I should get the worst because I want to treat my guys better than I treat myself. I don't want to give them a reason to think I'm a selfish leader. As a side note, I want to promise you my mom is pretty great too. She just didn't write me a letter, so sorry mom. So here's the part where I'm going to see all my dad's ideas, but don't worry, Mrs. Fisher, wherever you are, he's getting the proper credit this time. 
So, since we're supposed to be the leaders of the future, I'd like to highlight some of the things he said. What good is a leader if there are no followers? And what good is a follower if there are no leaders? It's the two working together that make a team, a family, or even a nation. Followers are constantly looking at leaders when leaders have no idea when they're looking or watching. Leaders lead when no one is around or watching. That is what leaders do. They constantly do what is right and true in their mind, body, and more importantly, their soul. Followers are always watching. Leaders need not be yelling or screaming orders to be good leaders. Some are, though. Leaders are people who lead by example. They work hard, they are smart, reasonable, compassionate, and are not afraid to step forward and correct a bad situation, even though it may not be popular at the time. In the end, a follower will understand. Keep working hard in everything you do. Don't give up. Be ready for some rough roads ahead. It won't be easy. Class of 2018, you've graduated, but you aren't finished yet. Like my dad said, there are some rough roads ahead, and it sure isn't going to be easy. But it's your road. Be the leader of it. Even if that means you are the follower to someone else. If you are called to be a leader, lead with an open mind and a strong heart. And don't be afraid to correct a bad situation, even if it isn't popular. If you are called to be a follower, follow with a passionate mind and a willing heart. And don't be afraid to keep the leaders in check. Stay true to yourself, your values, and everything you stand for, and you will find success. Thank you, Sarah. Our last class speaker is Miranda Schetzer. Miranda is the daughter of John and Leanne Schetzer. Miranda's fondest memory was marching back to the high school after football games with the marching little giants. Miranda plans to attend John Carroll University to study math and science. Ms. Miranda Schetzer. Look at this amazing group of young people shining in purple and white. The Fremont Ross class of 2018. Soon we'll be throwing our caps, ending our time as Ross students. We're moving forward to learn and experience new things. However, we can't expect to grow without first setting free any negativity that hangs on our shoulders from the past. Let go of any embarrassing moment, whether it be falling outside on the ice, having everyone laugh at you for that, showing up to school at 7.30 and again being laughed at on a two-hour delay, or scoring on yourself in a soccer game. Yes, those are all personal experiences. Move on from any failures or rejections and make peace with any poor decisions made. Don't waste time going over the what ifs. It's over now and can't be changed. What happened in the past helped shape us into who we are today. Learn from the past and move forward to better things. Let's make the most of what we've created thus far and live in the present. Today we're being thrown into the world. It reminds me of a SpongeBob episode where SpongeBob and Patrick take care of a little clam named Junior. If you're not familiar with SpongeBob, you're breaking my heart right now, but I forgive you. SpongeBob and Patrick watched Junior grow up in the span of half an episode, and it was time for him to learn to fly. I'm not sure why clams have the ability to fly in SpongeBob, but that's just how it is. There he stood on the ledge of SpongeBob's window. He wasn't afraid as he took the leap to fly away. SpongeBob might not be typically incorporated into graduation speeches, but I think there's something we can learn from Junior. If we have the same mentality as him, we'll achieve all that we desire. That means we must dive headfirst into each change without hesitation and take advantage of all opportunities. Junior didn't fear change. He chose to leave behind the comfort of SpongeBob's home to explore the entire sea. It would be easier to stay where everything is familiar, but there's no fun in that. Be confident like Junior and never stop exploring. The great thing about entering the world is that we can grow to be who we choose. Don't worry about what someone else wants or expects you to be. Chase after desires, even if it means straying from the crowd. We don't have to follow anyone's footsteps because we'll be making our own decisions and creating our own paths. No one can tell us something is out of our reach because we have the determination to do anything. Remember that we have strong foundations for our lives. We can build whatever we choose. The blueprint may change a few times, but we will be left with a wonderful outcome if we run at challenges and opportunities head on. Thank you.
Thank you, class of 2018 speakers. Excellent job. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce the Ross High School Concert Choir under the direction of Mr. Dennis Pita.
shot of. The other one is, know what your audience wants. And I know that you came to see them, not me. But a couple things I would like to say to my first graduating class. Graduates, you see those people? They love you. They love you, and they're old. I've seen some of them. They're really, really old. But my point is that is a recipe for wisdom. There's somebody up there that loves you and has gone through a few things in life. You will not live long enough to make all the mistakes that you'll need to make to know everything you'll need to know. So listen to them. Unless they're crazy, but don't listen to that. Second thing. Our American culture does not have anything else quite like a high school graduation. There's really no other coming of age ceremony in our culture. In a Jewish culture, there's bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs. In a Mexican, there's quinceañeras, where students are presented as adults and ready to take on life. This graduation really is the biggest thing we have and the only thing we have to say, here you are. You're 18 years old. You're about to walk across the stage to get a diploma. And in a moment, we're going to hand you those little folders on that table right there. We're going to hand them to you. And what that says is that the federal government, the state government, and your local board of education, have, have, have met those requirements to be a graduate of Fremont Ross High School. But my hope is that you'll think of it as even more. I hope you recognize the implications. Now, when you take it, as, they, as we hand it to you, you're going to take it. And that is publicly saying, I got this. I can do this. I'm going to do this. You're saying that I'm going to own this. I am responsible for where my life goes from here. No blame for anybody else. No blaming circumstances. But as sobering as that is, the power of that realization is huge. You get to make your life, and that is amazing. Being grown up is awesome. The last thing I want to tell you, one quick piece of advice. Sometime today, find somebody up there and hug them a little harder than you used to hug them. Hug them for a little longer than you usually hug them, because they're going through a very emotional time as well. Because there's no more perfect picture of unselfish love than what's sitting in the sun today. And they love you. Last thing. I know what they feel like because four years ago, the last time we had a graduation outside, my own little giant marched across that stage and got his diploma. It's a powerful moment for everyone involved. Enjoy it. Take your life and own it. And hug someone up there, especially hard today. Congratulations, class of 2018. Before presenting the class of 2018, I'd like to announce that the senior class requests that you hold your applause and celebration until all students have received their diplomas. Each of you is eagerly awaiting the announcement of your graduate's name. However, excessive celebration prevents other parents from hearing their students' names. So please hold your applause until all members of the class have been announced. Mr. Detweiler, Board President Ms. Laird, and members of the Fremont City School Board, I certify to you that each member of this senior class has met all requirements set forth by the Fremont City Schools. I would like to present them for acceptance as graduates of Fremont Ross High School.
Morgan, England. <laughs> Alyssa Ferrier. Jaslyn Foley. <laughs> Hannah Foose. Audrey Ford. Alyssa Fry. Medea Garza. Michaela Glassby. Sherry Glenn Klaus. Alexia Gonzalez. Lillian Gonzalez. Trey Ickes. 
Devin Jagodinski.
Lewis.
Caleb Wagner. Trevor Weicker. Nathan Welton. Tate Williams. Dylan Williamson. Tariq Williamson. Nathan Willis. And Christian Zaragoza.
a close. We thank everyone here for joining us in our commencement celebration. Farewell and good luck to the Fremont Ross class of 2018.